You have now entered the Railcast. This the host, DJ Rail Life, and alongside Tom and TJ. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show. Sensitive listeners, beware. All right, welcome to the Railcast. This is your host, DJ Rail Boogie. Here with the fellas, here with Shades, here with Tall. TJ, what's going on, y'all? Chillin', man. All is good, dog. All right. Shades, what's up with you, man? About the grandma cookies. Appreciate it. You know cookies, bro. <laughs> I should, have said, I should have said the name. They ain't cutting us no check, man. TJ. Happy Tuesday, everybody. You made it through the hurricane. Congratulations. Congratulations. Right. Clap it up. Good segue. Uh, you know, speaking of the hurricane, want to send out our prayers and condolences to uh, the people of the Bahamas. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how many people lost their lives. Is it up to, what, 70-something now? Yeah. Our last check. Oh, man. And thousands of people lost their homes. So definitely want to send out our prayers and condolences to them and just realize how blessed we are not to take you know things that we have for granted man because it was a horrible storm man so you know prayers and condolences again go out to them and also uh looking on this this here paper uh hurricane disaster relief bahamas accepted donations and the drop-off location is terry's hmm. terry's glimmerous beauty bar and and academy uh this is at 7451 riviera boulevard suite 132 in the uh, Mega Center building, Miramar, Florida, 33023. Items they're taking are uh, water, diapers, wipes, mouthwash, and so on and so forth, whatever you could bring. Again, that location is Terry's Glamorous Beauty Bar and, Ac- and Academy, 7451 Riviera Boulevard, Suite 132. And also, if you can't make it to this location, man, do your research and you know, make sure that you donate, man. I, don't, I wouldn't say donate to the Red Cross, but there's other organizations out there that you could donate to, maybe your local church, or you know, just do your research. If you're always on the phone, Google it. You know, just get back to these people that need it, man. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate it. All right, fellas, so what is it that you want to get into first? Not all at once. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about the athletes. The, uh, the athletes uh, turning down the HBCU schools to go to white schools. Well, what it is is that Jamil, Jamil Hill, who used to be you know, formerly ESPN, his or her podcast, uh, did an article today. And the article is basically saying that uh, black athletes need to stop going to white colleges and go to uh, HBCU colleges. What do you guys, you, you read the article? No, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. I read the article. Uh, what do you think about uh, what she said? And what do you think about the whole idea? The whole idea makes um a lot of sense because they have uh like you say you know these athletes going to these major schools like he's I mean, like an article say alabama you know the, the clemson whatever they go to these major schools and especially in a uh, urban neighborhood that these black kids go and it's like these top athletes go there and they make these these schools for them in white a lot of money you know and these programs is excelling these programs is uh they're getting better funds and you know what I'm saying, and these alumni come back. But at the same time, our black colleges is not getting these athletes there, mm-hmm. you know, to help build money for our black um, colleges. So they're getting all these athletes from the urban neighborhood and they're making money off these black kids, right. you know, and building their program up, which is our black community should be, or our black kids should be going to our black colleges to build the program up. Um. You know, and I like when she said that, and it and it's true. You know, and you know, I didn't really think about that. You yeah, know, let me tell you something. I didn't, I didn't either. I didn't even think about that. You know, but you know how that is. That's in general. Yeah. What, what, Tall, what you think, man? Well, to my opinion, is that uh, being a former athlete, I already know how it works, how the system works in the uh, the HBCU schools and the the regular uh, ACC schools and. Uh, big East schools and so far, the big tournament schools. Um, let me give you an example. Yeah. If you're a five-star athlete, you're going to go to a top school if you want to go to the pros. It's very rare that kids that go to HBCU schools make it to the pros. Right. Very the, rare. The biggest name I, I could think of off rip is probably Jerry Rice. You know what I'm saying? It's very rare. Jerry Rice, Steve McNair. You know, those are some of that. Matter of fact, he has his own academy. Yeah. You know, so... But other than, other than than that, are you gonna do if you if you a five star athlete? Ninety nine percent of times you're gonna go to a big college. You're not gonna go to Tennessee State. You're not gonna go to Georgia State because you're a five star athlete. You're gonna go where they're 
<laughs> the games are televised. You're gonna get good recognition. You're gonna get more exposure going to a Division One school. It's, exactly. That's, that's that's basically what it is. Yeah. And a lot of these schools, whether they want to admit it or not, a lot of these schools paying these kids. A lot of these schools are giving their uh, these uh, the families jobs. Yes. You know what I'm saying. So a lot of these schools are promising uh, kids different options that these HBCUs can't. Kind of similar to uh, uh, Reggie Bush. <clears throat> Yeah. To UC, USC. Mm-hmm. For this whole family, his dad a job and so on. Right. Yeah, my house. So how many schools you know at HBCU school that would do it? Zero. So, so how, so how, are you familiar with that, uh, Cisco? No? Shades? No, he gonna, Shades gonna sit this one out. So how do we, how do we change that? You know, how do we convince You can't her? really change it because the simple fact if you going if you want the recognition and, and you're a five-star athlete, you're not gonna go to a, a, a predominantly black school like FAMU if you're a dominant uh, kid in school. Well, I don't think you want to go to family anyway because that's not well, a football I'm, school. No, but I'm just saying, if you're yeah. an athlete in general, it don't have to be football. It could be baseball or basketball. You're not going to go to that type of school. Well, let's know? let's say football because that's just the subject of football, okay. right? Let's talk about football. Football has more players on their roster than yeah. as a basketball or even baseball, right? Okay. So let's say some, some five-star black athletes decide they want to go to an HBCU. Okay. Like, do you think that like that can happen? Like, that, that could be a trend. Like, you know it what? Can happen. They're not gonna do it. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna do it because Kay. number one, you want to get away from. You want to get the exposure. That's number one. Right. That's you want to get the exposure. One. Most HBCU schools they don't televise, but they're on a small channel, a small mm-hmm. market. They televise, but on a small market. You know, so that that's the big difference. You know, you're going to be on ABC or you're going to be on Sunshine Network. If that. (laughs) If that. that. Most of the games are not televised. Most of the funds for HBCU school is not as big as it would be if you go to a D1 school. But let me say this. Say it. A large market school, I mean. Let me say this. Is it it possibility that FAMU can can be a huge school? Yes. Let me tell you why. Look at UCF. UCF? Is, is it UCF? That's not the same. UCF? Not the same, man. It was what's the name of that college? I the name of that college, man. Um, Cause UC, UCF is a UCF? one. Is it Division one, Division two. Division, Division one. one. Yeah. It was. I forgot the name of that, that college. Is it from down here? They look at T Y Hill. T Y Hill came from what? F A U. Yeah. He came from F A U. Yeah. FAU you know, is a bigger school than FAMU. Okay, but FAU... But it's it, still, it's, it is, but it's still compared to USC. It's still a small school. It's still a small it's school. It's a small D one <laughs> school. But you can't, like you can't I said, FIU to 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 UConn. Look at after that. Look at after that state. What's the name? That's the name of that state, right? Yeah. Is and that where like Steve, Steve McNair came from? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you have decent players that go on undefeated, your school is going undefeated. Eventually, they're going to take notice. Like, okay, this, they they beat everybody in the division. We got to move. We got to move them up a division. Only thing that's going to that, do it the way it works is, is funding. If they got the money, you got to accumulate a large sum of money to move to another division. If you, your school don't generate enough money, they're not going to move to another division. Yeah, what about attention? Like you said, Steve McNair went to a small that's school. One school. That's one person. Name a couple of them. J- J- All you need is one person to get, 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 get money. On HBCU. Let's say it can happen. A trend can happen. Okay, so we're going to say that. Okay. Because looking at this, the NCAA reported $1.1 billion in revenue. Okay. And this is 2017. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're making a lot of money off of us. I know that. And then money's not being put back in the community. It, it's not. It's not. Eventually, what's going to happen is these HBCUs going to be non-existent. They're going to be done. Well, most of them are. Most of them uh, uh, get canceled out because yeah. of uh, low enrollment. Okay. You know, because of low enrollment. All kids that go to school is not athletes. You know, most of the time, they go to those black schools because their relatives went to the black schools. Right. They don't go to that because I, just, I, I love to go to a black school. Or HBCU school, I'm gonna use it. They they don't say that. Some they, do. It's very rare that you get five black kids. They don't just say I want to go to HBCU school. Some They're gonna do. say I want to go to the uh, uh, University of Miami. I want to go to Florida State. I want to go to a big market school if I'm if I'm good. But like or if that, you're playing sports. Yeah. Playing sports. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. But you're you know, sports, I, th- yeah. I think they kind of groom them early because you know most of the, the the superstar athletes in high school they go like to especially down here South Florida they go to. Um, What's the name of that school? St. Thomas? I mean, yes. uh, they go to St. Thomas, yeah. whatever. So, the school looking nice. Look at Dillard. Dillard basketball team was doing good. And guess what? They get all that money and build on that school. Most of that stuff come from the athletic program. Yeah, but at Dillard, 
Let me let me explain something. A lot of people don't understand this. When you go to a a, a black school in a black neighborhood, yeah, your team might win a championship. But how many of those basketball or football athletes are actually going to college? It's very rare that half, probably ten, go to college. Out of it, it, it'd be less than that. Yeah, it, it's exactly. less than ten. You may get on one team. You may get two guys that go to a. a I would really have school. a sorry record, and all my kids go to college in a good record, and have two or three people go to college. Mm. Look at um because in, in back in the days, yeah, you can be a good athlete with low grades. Nowadays, you gotta have both. You can't just yeah. go to school and just say, oh yeah, I can play football I'm faster than you. If you got a one point five grade grade point average, they're not gonna play you. Right. Let, let me read this what she said. Please do. This is what she said. In this country where the uh, racial wealth gap remains enormous, the middle white household has nearly ten times the wealth of the middle black household. You see what I'm saying? And this rate of a white ownership is about 70% higher than the black owned household. Institution, um, naturally, a black middle class or cultural. And when these institutions are healthy, they begin economic, economic developing, development to black na neighborhoods that surround them. So basically what it is, is that let's say somebody like, um, what's the college in Jacksonville? Uh, oh. It's a college in Jackson, if you have that name of it. But the neighborhood around these black colleges is in, look at Bethune Cookman. Okay. The, 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 the neighborhoods around there is not really up to par. Of course. But if you bring uh, that college is getting money and getting these black people getting more doctors and stuff like that coming out, coming back, alumni, and stuff like that, maybe it could build a neighborhood okay. up and yeah, stuff like that. Not to cut you off, but I'm going to tell you something about that too. You always cut people off. Mo most, most kids, when they go to college, you get a loan, a student loan. Mm -hmm. You think these people want to pay a hundred some thousand dollars to become a doctor at a student loan? That take forever to pay that back. Most of them just want to go to school, get a degree, and get it get it over with. Once they, they get a grant or a scholarship, if they don't get a grant or scholarship, they really can't afford to go to school. Yeah, but at the same time, you gotta understand. I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, it's like if they know this 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 is an A student, like a 4.0 student, they get scholarships from all these big these big colleges. You know what I'm saying? So we're they, talking about HBCU schools. Uh, exactly. We talk, I am talking about that. But at the same time, the HBCU schools, there's not. I guess I don't they know if they funds they, to, to give you. If, if all of us apply for a doctorate degree, yeah, only one or two of us gonna get it out of four. But that's what I'm saying. Athletic wise, they feel she's saying that they could build money athletic wise when it comes to football and stuff like that. Instead of going to the major school. How? How? I mean, so I, okay. you, you, the star athletes have to enroll not, into these schools. They're that, not that's the thing. Go. But that's the thing. If if we expect these these legendary schools to last and to better the community and everything, they have to go to these schools. They don't care. And they're it, not gonna do it. And it may take yeah. it may take one. It may take one really great athlete to enroll one of these schools. Well, he goes to the pros. Well, he goes to the pros and, yeah. he, and he gives back. And then maybe the next class, he tries to help another athlete. Hell, hell, we from the same neighborhood. This guy's a good athlete. He in the NFL. I'm gonna try to do the same thing. Uh, fund more programs for the college that get people right. more interested in right. going to the college to build a black college. And the people that go to the league, that's the thing too. They gotta give back. They're not gonna do that, man. They, See, that's that's the problem. Mo most of us, most of us, once we get to the league, we just want to buy cars, jewelry, and all this other stuff that we really don't need. Like for example. Antonio Brown, where did he go to? Central University of Central Michigan. Yeah, yeah Central Michigan. Michigan. Okay, he was a fifth round pick. Yeah, was anybody looking for him? No. Oh. I mean, even though Central Michigan is not a H HBCU. No. But again, he worked hard. NFL have bigger rosters, so more players can play. He worked no. his way up. Now I don't know if he went back to that school or whatever and gave back I'm money. Sure he did. I'm sure he didn't either, but. We can do the same thing for for these HBCUs. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm, I'm not saying. saying it's gonna take it's gonna happen overnight. Nah. Good luck. You know, just like anything else, it takes a couple of people to get started, and then you know what I'm saying. It follows. Yeah. Look, cause like you saying, they, they want to get recognized. So all back. Men, of course they're they, gonna do. See, that, see, you know what? And that's a that is another um, con con that condition our people to go to these major colleges. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you want it's, it's conditioned like that because you want to get seen. But if you good enough, you don't got to go to a major college. Your talent, your talent, going to speak, it's for, gonna speak for itself. Well, first thing they're gonna say is, okay, he threw for 50 touchdowns, but he has no competition. 
But then they're going to invite what they did with Steve McNair. They're going to invite They said him. this. They invited him to the countdown. And see. He killed it. He was a high pick. He was an all pro. There you go. Well, it's just. Very rare. It, it can, it can it, happen. It happens a lot. It can happen. Okay. It happens a lot. You, you probably don't care about it. So we'll see. Shades? <laughs> so we'll see. Hopefully, man, you know, that could be, you know, something in the future where five star athletes can go to these HBCUs and help these these colleges out in the community, man, instead of all these white people getting all this money. You know, they they, they making the, a billion dollars two years ago. Yeah, they making that off. They're not they not they're not paying us the students. Nope. They sell their the their, their jerseys and everything. Yep. And, these kids can barely eat. I think yeah. now now they can eat now. But you know what they're saying <laughs> to me when I ask that question? Yeah. Because they give you a scholarship. So they have That's not partial enough. ownership of you. Well, they're supposed to be working on something now where they're supposed to be paying kids. I don't know. They're not going to pay them, man. Because if I'm giving you a $50,000 scholarship to come to my school, why would I pay you? You're paying to go to class. So how do they eat? How do they survive? And, you, and I'm, I'm, surviving off your scholarship. I'm a student you're athlete. Your, uh, I'm a student athlete. athlete and... You selling my jersey, but I don't get nothing from it. They give you a meal ticket. That's how you survive. <laughs> you go to the, the, dang, the dang. child hall. You go to the dining hall. So I can't get mad at that kid for taking money under the table. Yeah. No, I know it's not. No. <laughs> yeah, but you know, <laughs> but you know, the, the reality is this right here. Like you said, against the athletes in the article, they're making like millions of dollars off TV sponsors. You know, forgot about that. They, forgot they, about they, TV yeah. sponsors. All, forgot about shoe endorsements. All this stuff like, that they're getting. Under Armour. Armour. All this stuff. What shoe endorsements that kids get in school? They don't get no shoe on I ain't talk, I'm talking about the universities. The universities. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking right. about. The but yo, if, yo, if they program is... But the kids don't get anything off that. All they do is get a multiple pair of shoes per year. You probably get five or six pair of shoes. That's all you get. You don't get like a whole whopper of shoes. You, but, you wear the uniform according to the school that you go to. Right. The team logo, whatever, Nike, Jordan, whatever, Adidas. That's what you wear. That's mean, part of Meanwhile, uniform. Nike and Adidas and Under Armour are paying the universities. I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> and making money off the, I agree the with that. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but your, they get exposure too by wearing the stuff on TV. Yeah, that's what they do that. But your program is trash. <laughs> you're not gonna get no sponsors because you not it's not being seen on TV. Right? Imagine something, Sarah. You play you play you play ball, right? Imagine something. How does these um these big time colleges play these small colleges? Why? Like, how do they do it? What do you mean, how? Like, don't, because I heard that the big cop, you see, that's how they make money. They do. They do. For, just, for <clears throat> instance, when Bethune Cookman coming this week, when they come down here, you're going to give them probably like, I don't know, $800,000, $900,000. Why? Well, they know for a fact, number one, the team is going to make their money. If you bring Bethune Cookman down here, fam, you down here, you know how many fans going to come? Gotcha. They're gonna make their money back. They're yeah. gonna tailgate. They're gonna make all their money back. Trust yeah. me. Even though they're gonna get blown yes. up by eighty points, the, fans, the, yeah. fan, the yeah. fans are stupid. Yeah. They're gonna go see the game for the band. Right. You get what I'm gotcha. saying? Yeah. So yeah. that's how that's how it works. Gotcha. Well, we'll see, man. Let's slide, let's slide off of that. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, this happened last week. I'm gonna get your guys' opinion on it. The comments that Jay Z made. You heard about it, Chase? I've been off, man. You been off, man. Well, basically, um. Jay Z made comments saying this surfaced from January, but because with the NFL, but because he made a partnership with the NFL recently, um, the video came out and he basically said people raised under single parent homes is the reason for police brutality. Run about me one more time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people, people, the reason for p police brutality. Is, be, is from people that was raised from single parent homes. No, that's not true. That's what he said. He said that's why it's police brutality because it's people growing up in single parent homes. That's not true. That's what he said. Yeah. No. Yeah, so he. I'm sure some of those the police brutalities came from people <laughs> with two parent households. Right, yeah. You just don't single out. Oh, wait, where are you from? One parent household? Okay, I'm going to take it out. Yeah, come here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like yeah, that. That, that's what he said. I, I, I think that, um, you know, what he messed up on, if he said that it's a problem with authority, mm -hmm. I would not stand that more. Mm -hmm. Because if you want your father not around, you know, you're not used to authority, you, you don't respect authority, so you yeah. may lash out and, and be a rebel and all that. But what do you, Shay, what do you think about that comment from over? Mesh. Single parent? Raised single parent? What do you think? I don't think that's true. From what he said? Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Man, you're going to be an asshole <laughs> regardless. 
Right. Single, no one, single. two, yeah. Yeah. So that you don't think that has an effect at all with uh, police brutality, right? No, I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't either. Yeah. So, TJ, what do you think? Uh, like the only what you what you pick about what he said. Um, you know, if he, you know, say it another way, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, respect authority, then you know. But I understand what he's saying too. I'm kind of split in between because, you, you know, mean? if you if you have like a, you know, respectful yeah, two parent household. Well, no, forget about that. You know, two like you said, two people in the house, they still it don't matter, man. You know, we all, it's, not, it's not about the ra- how they raise. We all know people that yeah that had both of their parents and lived good, yeah. and, and they was jerks. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They got in trouble. It just mm-hmm. it's an individual. It has nothing to do with or not as far as uh, police brutality. It don't matter where you grew up at. If the cops want to do something, they're gonna do it regardless of regardless who, yeah. who you raised with. You know what I'm saying? That just thought that was crazy, but and also. <laughs> him again, um, Jigga. I don't know if you heard that. Um, Rock Nation NFL gave this group. I forgot the name of the group. Uh, they funded this company some money, and the company cut off this guy's dreads. I don't know if you guys heard about that. Oh wow! No, I see that he cut off. She she cut off this guy's dreads and said that he'll basically have a better life since she cut his dreads off. Well, and this is him and the NFL are funding this company. I heard they did some good other good things, but it was a white lady cut off a, a black dude dreads, and she, she said, "Since I'm cutting your hair, that you have a better life." Got some type of like stereotyping type. Um, yeah, that's like I take that as stereotyping. Bro, what's up? I see you. Yeah, that that was you know the young man made a response the other day. He said that I just thought it was weird that he said he didn't have money for a haircut. Mm-hmm. And he was maybe in the barbershop or salon or wherever he was with this lady, and she offered to cut his hair. I, I would have just asked, hey, let me get $20. Yeah. Let me go see Cisco. Let me get $20. That's, that's, he, some, that, that's suspect, man. That's I don't some racist. Know. How y'all feel about that? Yeah, man. I think he tried to clean that up, man, by saying that. I think so, too. Because hey, if you want to go over there and say what you're supposed to say, mm-hmm. well, you know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what you feel about that, TJ? Prejudged. You know, I don't know, man. That's TJ, what you think, man? Probably did pre the guy. You know, like I say, but me personally, yeah. if I had my own business, you know what I'm saying? You're a businessman, mm-hmm. right? You're a businessman, you know? Mm. I mean, I want you to be, me personally, just me, I'm not pre nobody, but I want you to be clean, dude. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, what about dreads? So people with dreads can't? There's people out there who have dreads. Yeah, yeah. Have they have them nice, but yeah. as long as it's nice, yeah. you know what I'm saying, they ain't all over the place. Right. You know, you got to be like, we're presentable. Not, we're not saying dreads with, with gold tips at the bottom. We're just saying regular, like Larry Fitzgerald. Like, yeah, how nice. dreads is. It's, it's neat. Well, yeah, we all can agree certain jobs you can't yeah. get with dreads. You know, that happened to a friend of mine. He was trying to get a job at a hospital, and, and he had an issue with, the, with one of the big guys there. I don't yeah. know. Sir, yeah, yeah. And uh, but he, honestly, I used to cut his. I used to give him a tape, mm-hmm. but his dress was clean. It was fresh, you know. It was nice. Yeah. He kept it clean. Yeah, yeah. That's just a, he, like you said. It's a stereotype. Like you know, I, I get certain jobs. You can't have long hair. Like yeah, probably, yeah. probably the police force. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you can't go in the army with long hair. Like I get those kind of jobs, but just to just to prejudge somebody because they got dreads. Yeah. You know, we know what that's about. Yeah, that's, that's, that's foul. They're gonna do that regardless, like they did AJ. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's foul. Who's AJ from 106 Park? Yeah. Oh, he could have said, because he went on ET, right? Yeah. And he had the dress for a long time. Yeah, all the way down, you know. Yeah. T- but his dress was neat, though. Yeah, they it wasn't sloppy. But to advance his career, he had to do what he had to do. Yeah. You know, I don't I think switched. he would have been, he mm-hmm. been in the same position if he wouldn't cut his dress. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. He's a good guy. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. I don't know if he's good. Did he did he get caught up in some uh, accusations lately? Uh, <laughs> sexual harassment? Yeah, he did. He, he no, I'm not just tripping out. I don't know about that. Man. man. Now, look it up. I'm just saying. Probably it's over. I don't know about that. So how about these beers? <laughs> <laughs> no, some places have you cut your beard. Like, be, yeah. if you go to, uh, right. I mean, that's understandable, though. Because they can yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that don't count. And if you go, if you go like, University of Kentucky, when Coach Cal was out there, he, you couldn't have no sideburns, no beard. You know what I'm saying? Because we had to be clean faced. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. So it's a, it's a military thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just you know just trying to show 
discipline and all that yeah. stuff, the authority, but I kind of understand some of it. Yeah, you know, but, you know. but for a lady to tell me, cut your dress or your beard because your yeah, life is gonna be yeah, your life gonna be better. That's crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot of it's a lot of us out there that got low haircuts or no hair like Terry and, and being harassed by cops and killed daily. You know what I'm saying? Let, so, uh, let me tell you why. You know, she, tell us why she tell said me. that. Let me tell you. Tell why. I had a story. <laughs> I heard a story uh, about this lady. She was a uh, this, this pastor. He was on the uh, plane with her, and he was asking her. You know, she was she he she was a CEO. She had her own company, and he was like, you know, these guys come to her uh, her place. She don't mind hiring them, but she said that. When they come to the job, when they come for an interview, they have earrings and, and, and you know, their hair is messed up, whatever. Mm -hmm. She said she won't hire them because while she was the CEO, most of the guys like that would try mm -hmm. to talk to all the women inside the job where she was. Um, all the guys with the dress and earrings? Yeah, earrings, or even if they have earrings, she said that she won't hire them. Because they would try to talk to them. It, it's sort of like a, I guess, I don't know, type of... Romeo, whatever, but she said she would not hire them, especially if they're not clean and they yeah. get earrings in their ear. And well, this I mean, was the CEO of uh, her own company. But but you know what? What's up, Al? I see you. But like again, like if you're running a, a business, you have their right to hire who you want to hire. Laws are not just because you're skin color. Yeah. Like if you if you, if you want to hire people that's clean cut, that's cool. But if there's people out there who got dressed and they clean, it should be the reason why you don't hire them. Like, if they're dirty-looking dreads, yeah, hell, if I'm the CEO, I'm not going to hire you either. You know what I'm saying? That's just... What if you got braids? And what kind 40? of braids? Cornrows? And E-40. E-40? Yeah. E-40 ain't got braids? Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wrong rapper. Huh? Oh, wow. That's a, he, huh? He's 40 years old and he got oh, braids. Oh, he's 40? Yeah. Oh, I think he said E-40. Oh, yeah. Well, nah, nah, I ain't hiring hire you because... Well, right, what's different from, from that than dreads? What, cornrows? Yeah. Cornrows don't look neat, man. <laughs> and then... No okay. matter that certain age should be wearing cornrows. I'm about to say that. It should be an age limit with cornrows. Like, what's yeah. the age? What the, you could have. What's the age limit should be cornrows? I, I say, like, 20, <laughs> man. The most, the most, like, 25. The most. Like, Kawhi Leonard shouldn't have cornrows. No. Like, hey man, this man is a, he a basketball player. He I don't care. That, that, that don't count. It basketball. do count. That's a grown man. On, on the basketball court. Now, he shouldn't have cornrows, man. Now, check this out. Because we're talking about all this stuff, you know. Had a homegirl uh -oh. that um she wanted to get into the real estate business. Mm -hmm. She went, you know, she was going to school, and she one day she told me mm -hmm. that she wanted to get the sleeve. That ain't gonna work. And I told her, why would you want to do that? Don't you want to go sell houses? Right. You know, people that you know, people judge you like that. Right. And you know, you're supposed to look presentable. Mm -hmm. How, what did you say about that? I I agree. Like, cause what's she gonna do? She gonna wear long sleeve shirts all the time? She told me. Well, it's a lot of, um, I don't know, like people making big money with all these sleeves. I mean, but that's them. They've they probably been in the business for a, a long while. Time, right. And they haven't had their clientele. You're just getting into the real estate and trying to build your business. And you're a woman. Like, when you trying to sell something, you got to look your best. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be, you know, pretty. and. I know, told her all that. You got to, like, to see a saleswoman tatted up, that's not a good look. To, to sell houses? Yeah, it's not to sell anything. You, you know, and I told her, yo, you know, she did it anyway. If she was a barber, she cool, you know what I'm saying? Or a tattoo parlor or something, but like to sell houses? Like some people mm -hmm. see that, oh, they might not even think you're a real real estate agent, you know what I'm saying? Like they're gonna judge you. <laughs> Tell her, Kim. But in today's world, man, I see a lot of people, you know, they get tatted up and companies, I think they hire them and I don't, I don't know, man. It, de it depends. I, I I feel like, you know, a white person with a sleeve going to get hired before we would. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what I think. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> y'all don't think so? What do you think? Well, I think that... Um, <laughs> Terry Kim. Terry Kim. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. You know, but like, so you got to be presentable when you're yeah. you, you, you selling something, you know. Because uh, you're not presentable, people are going to very stand off. You know what I'm saying? People's not going to buy nothing. You walk through the new Sawgrass Mall or whatever, you know, and you go do that, this change. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, you just, you know, you got to be presentable. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what everything you do. Your first you impression know? can be your last. Yeah, you know so what I'm saying? So you, you see somebody walk up with a sleeve, they're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. It's a turnoff. But if you 
present it right, you know, dress good, look good, mm -hmm. uh, you can articulate yourself. That can go a long way. You know what I mean? It so, helps. Yeah, definitely. It definitely it can helps. help make you or break you. Yeah, definitely, man. So, hmm. yeah, we'll see what's up in the following news. I want to talk to you guys about uh, the Wu Tang uh, series. Have you guys watched it? Oh, man, boy, you no? can get me started, bro. That's Have you watched it, Todd? I haven't watched it. Oh, man. Yet. Okay, Wu Tang has a, a series of, I think it was American Dream? Is that what it Amer was? American Saga. The American Saga is on Hulu. Um,. Basically about how Wu Tang came up, you know they got, you know, a good, pretty good cast, man. Nobody you know, I don't know if you'll know them, probably won't. But uh, what is it? Three episodes so far? So far three episodes, and now they're gonna give us an episode every, every Wednesday. I yeah, think it yeah, is. the Wu Wu Wednesdays is what they call it. So uh, the guy who played who played in uh, Equalizer Two, that yeah, he, he's he, an he's actor. a really good actor. He's playing the RZA. Um, yeah. The RZA is the RZA. I'm sorry? Who playing Ghostface? Rizzo? I mean, the, the, the guy? No, 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 no. I'm not playing Ghostface. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't, like, yeah. like, this guy, I don't know. But the Rizzo and Met the Man are the executive producers of this Whoa. of this series. So, you know. Well, yeah. But you guys ain't see it. What do you think about the series so far? I'm sorry. It's, it's man, I like it. Man, I like the way, yeah. um, especially the ODB guy. Yeah. He got it. He man, got it. that guy in ODB. He, he got it, man. The only thing I say, you gotta watch it, man. The only thing, I, the only thing I say about it, if you can, watch the um, what do you call that? The um, the, the Showtime documentary. The documentary, yeah. Two it, it's yeah. four parts, one hour each, and then you watch the show. But on the show, they should have put their names. Right. I, I, for, I've heard a lot of people say that they were confused because if you don't know. The 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 Wu the real names yeah. you'll get confused on it. I I knew this story already, so I had a call. I, I, I had a call yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big Wu Tang fan. That's my favorite group, so I knew who it was. I knew you know what, what was going on. I even sent you a text like, man, now I know how it feels. Yeah, when they asked me about NWA, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they kept sending text. Who's this? What's going on? I'm confused. But yeah, they should have they should have uh, you know put the real put names the, yeah. the AKA. Right, they should have did that, but. Um, you guys know Davies? You heard Davies? What's Davies? Okay, he hasn't heard of Davies. He's a rapper from Harlem, but he's playing Method Man. He's doing a good job. He's doing too. a good job. Uh, I don't like the guy who's playing RZA. To me, I don't. He's a good actor. He don't. I don't see RZA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't see it. Raekwon is dope. Raekwon is good. I forgot what movie that young man was in. But he's a, he's a good actor too. The guy that's playing Ghost is good. ODB is good, like it, and Divine, Riz's brother. Oh man, he looks just I like Divine. He's the man. most accurate between yeah. him and ODB. He looks just like mm -hmm. Divine, man. But um, other than uh, overall, I like it though. I mean, I didn't I know. Like it. I didn't know those cast, those two, based on the show. I didn't know they were shooting at each other like I that. I did, yeah, I did. Um, Ray, Ray Kwan and Ghostface. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're raping each other. Yeah, they yeah, were like shooting it. at each other. Like, in Staten Island, there's two projects, famous projects. Uh, Stapleton is where Ghostface is from, and Park Hill, which is, they call it Killer Hill. Yeah. So they had beef with each other. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they formed a group, huh? Yeah, so that's why it's interesting to see them as enemies and then going to being, hell, best friends in the group. Yeah. They did albums together, so. Yeah. That's dope, because yeah. now that I know that, I appreciate the album even more. Right. When I look at the um, mm -hmm. only built for Cuban Lynx, the Raekwon first album, yeah. I'm like, man, I, I appreciate it more now. Like, right. damn, when I know the history of what happened there. Like, I, I, I love, you know, the the, the story behind the, the beat machines. I love seeing ghosts wearing wallies. Like, yep. it's, it's dope, man. They, they did a really good job on the story, man. And I'm interested to see, you know, how, where else they go with it, man. Oh, on the SB 1200, SB when, when they went to the store, yeah. it was 10 seconds. Not I told, 10. Yeah, I told you, yeah. It's told me 12. You said 12. I told you 10. Don't be lying on camera. Oh my this boy lying. You I, told you, I told you 10. You no, said 12. No, no. You said, are you sure? I said, they said 10. I said 10. And you, you said, said 12. 12. You said 12. Stop Yo. It. You're lying, boy. Yo, you told me no, 12. You know mm. You're right. I said it was 12. You said it was 10. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I had to think about it. Yeah, I had to think about it. Yeah, I did say 12. But the SB 1200, if you guys don't know, it was a... A beat machine that they used early, well, in the early 90s? Yeah. 
is one of the, you know, we able to the sample music, it was a lot of famous producers used this beat machine, you know what I'm saying? So most of the game in the yeah. early I think know. I've seen that in the hip hop evolution, I think they had that. Yes. Yeah. Have you watched yeah. that too? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I think you guys watched that? The new that the new episode. Yeah. The new yeah. season, right? Yeah. I, I watched uh it was a season three. Yeah. I'm gonna watch Man, it tonight. Let me tell you. If you guys don't know what is it called again? Hip hop evolution. Hip hop evolution. It's on Netflix. When they get to the dirty south. <sighs> You gotta watch. I can't like wait, it. bro. Like they, they, they talk about they talk about how how Atlanta has started. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't know Shadi. I knew he was from New York and he got signed to Luke. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Shadi. 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 Like gotta be tough. Yeah. I, I knew he was from New York. I didn't know that. You can hear it. Yeah. But he was signed to Luke. But he lived in Atlanta. I didn't know he lived in Atlanta. I didn't know he was from New York. You can't hear it when he talk? No. Listen to the intro, gotta be tough when he's talking. Cause he always talk about uh, uh, Run DMC. Right, I'm yeah. the king of rock. Like he, he, he was influenced by them. So he lived in Atlanta and Shake It blew up. And guess who did Shake It? DJ Toom. He did Shake It, come on, Shake It. Da -da. DJ Toom did that. I, so, know, I know a cat from a blocker that used to work with Toom. Yeah, cause he worked with Luke. Yeah. So they show he pretty much was the first rapper, but it didn't blow up because he not from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. He still was talking New York stuff, so it didn't, it didn't work how they wanted to work. So then what's his name came up? What's the guy name? Kilo G. So they go from Shadi, Kilo G, then they go to JD, but they still wasn't feeling it because it wasn't talking their lingo. Mm -hmm. And then them boys from Decatur came <laughs> and from East Point. And you gotta watch that whole. You gotta watch it. Like it showed, I'm watching that. Too. I already have it set up. It, it show Outkast and then Goody Mob and it's organized. No, like it's dope how they show it, man. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it. It show the whole like resurgence of the South. Damn dog, I, I didn't know Shy D was from New York, man. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. From, from I can't wait to watch the documentary tonight. Yeah, man, it's a dope one. Like, um, they, they even show like before then. They show like from the face, cause oh, that's where it started from. They show the no after after Kilo G. Then it was LaFace, and then when LaFace came to Atlanta, then it was Outkast. Okay. That's what it was, yeah. I think I'm on when they talking about... Um, Have they broken down Luke's, how he started his record label? Yeah. That was in the last the season. Last season, yeah. Yeah, last season hey, yeah. that, that was good, though. It was. All of it is good. Yeah. Like, they, like they even talking about, they got one on Eminem. It's what you got right Yeah, he's from the Bronx. Yep. I didn't know that, man. Yeah. I didn't know MC Shot D was from New York, yeah. though. I just learned something. <laughs> So guys, check that out. Hip Hop Evolution on Netflix is on season three. If you if you like love hip hop like we do, man, check it out. It's something definitely watch, man. Really good show. So what else you guys want to get into, man? You want to get into that, that topic with uh? With Whoa, with power, <laughs> man. <laughs> Y'all want to talk about that? I, I can't stand it no more, bro. Now, have you guys seen Power? Mm -hmm. I'm still on season. I mean, uh, uh, episode two. So, I so how about Snowfall? Anybody on Snowfall? Snowfall that was, was a weird, that was a Snowfall weird was episode. Dope, man. You guys watch yeah. Snowfall? No, I never got I, I'm on the third season, man. Snowfall? Yeah. It's just started. It's on third, season three. Yeah, we can't say nothing about Snowfall. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, go to the, the, uh, the topic. Which, what's, which one? The one with the uh, women versus to men. Yeah, go ahead. Speak that, man. Uh, <laughs> well, the title was, you know, they did a study on... A um, few people getting married. A mm -hmm. um, few people are getting married because there are sh a shortage of economical, stable men, single, stable single man uh, study shows. You know. So what you think about that? Did you read the article? Yeah, I did. So what you what you think about that? How did you? <laughs> I disagree, I, a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because you're based. It's, it's, that's part of the problem. Like we always talked about it before, that not all. Sensitive listeners, beware. Not all, but some women out there, if you're not on their level financially, they're not going to mess with you. Okay. That's just a fact. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, they're basically saying, like, not only you're not financially stable, but you're not attractive. So, <laughs> so that's why there's more single men out there. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I disagree a little bit, man, on that. 
Let me read this. This is what it said. What is it? It said the researchers <laughs> <laughs> hypothesized that potentially husbands, husbands for the for a single woman had an average income nearly sixty percent higher than the actual pool of available men. They were also thirty percent more likely to be employed and ninety percent, nineteen percent more likely to have a college de degree mm -hmm. compared to a current bachelor. In other words, the researcher says there is a shortage of available men who are economically attractive, which they define as a partner with the entire bachelor's with a bachelor's degree or income of more than forty thousand a year. Oh, so it's economically attractive. Yeah. So basically, what he's saying is, like he said, men they're not making more than forty thousand a year, or they don't have a bachelor's degree. Not and we have women out here now that have the bachelor's degree making more money than men. So women feel like they're not equal to them. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So now women are trying to find that, but they can't find that. And that's the problem. And that's the problem right there. <laughs> that's just exactly. That. Well, that's the problem. I, I think it also depends <laughs> on your, your upbringing. You know, yeah. if you don't get caught up in, in society, you would like a guy for who he is and not, you know, what he's bringing to the table as far as how much money he's making. You know, because you make $100,000 a year don't mean you're a good guy. And we can see that now with our president. He's one of the richest men in the world, and he's the biggest jerks in the world. So, that's, so that's why money should not define who you are and yeah. how your relationship is. Yeah. So the studies, the results are that it seems like now relationships is like a business. It is a business. He, he, he's always said that. Yeah, but let me go back to what you just said. Y'all saying that women, you know, uh, it shouldn't be about the money, right? No. It shouldn't be about the money. Okay. Not, not, not solely on the money. No, no money. This shouldn't be but you want, it shouldn't be number one. For, but it's different for men and women, right? Or it should go both ways. It should go both ways, but it doesn't. Because like, men, we, we, like, like you said, we don't care. No. We, so we, you don't care if she, you know, uh, hey, you know, tall, you know, I'm just going to, your girl say, I just want to stay at Walmart for the rest of my life. I don't want to do nothing. Well, no, we're not saying that you don't want anybody with no ambition. That's not what it's saying. It's saying you're not economically attractive. Yeah, so so they're point. saying forty thousand is is not good. Forty thousand under is not good. The <laughs> average household in America is what? Forty thousand probably. Thirty five to forty thousand is the average American household. What a piece each person in the family total. That's how bad it is. Yeah, okay, is the recession 40, coming? It's coming. It's it never left. It never 40, left. Forty thousand, two people together. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's a couple. Shit. <laughs> it's real out here. So, with that being said, <laughs> money is an issue for these women. Cause Not all sensitive people, please. For some of these women, it's an issue because, hey, I make 80000 you make forty. You got We're go. not equal. That's what they're saying. We don't care about that. We look at, hey, we make eighty. she make forty. You add that up, what's that? Just together. How much? That's what we look at it as. Two is better than one. But they're not looking at it that way. That's why it says it's, people it, are not getting better. You know better. what the problem is? She being selfish. Of course. <laughs> That's it. Of course. She, like, like homegirl said last time, not everybody being 100. Yeah. Yeah, but... With, like, with, with, you're right, ma'am. They're not looking at it as two no. and one. They're, looking at, they're, they're just looking at it as them. Yeah. I make 80. If you don't make 80 or better, we're not compatible. I'm out of here. He could be the best guy in the world. He's just lacking in that department. But yeah. that 40 plus 80 is a lot more than just 80 by itself. Mm -hmm. But they're not looking at it that way. Next thing you know, Tawana's over there happy hour. And, and while you home, wonder where she at. Because you're making 40000 less than her. Yeah. <laughs> and like I always said, we said before, in 2019, 2020, Women are the breadwinners. So you, as, a, as a single man, you have to expect that already. They're going to make more money than me. That's just what it is. Yep. So what else can you do? Hopefully, you might find somebody. <laughs> you might find somebody who don't care about that. Yeah. But according to this article, marriage is going down. And, and another thing, too. Money, money, money. That's why, you know, the common excuse would be like, you know, people don't want to get married because they don't want to get married. They're scared of commitment. That may be part of it, but it's more of this. 
It's, it's, more, it's, it's, it's more it's debt. That's it's more of that right there. That's, 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 that's what it is about. That's what the article said that even the younger generation now, um, in college, they did a study on that too, saying that these kids don't even want to get married. No. Because um, yeah, there's certain, you know. And you got to think right about now. it like this too. A lot of these kids coming up, right? They seen what their father went through. They seen what their uncle went through. They seen what their brother went through. Even the ones that was married, they yeah. probably lost everything. Yep. So now, me and 20, 21 years old college, wait a minute. I put these years in college. I'm about to get a career. I'm not about to give this up. And that's the mindset. Whether right or wrong, that's the mindset. But you know the sad thing about it? You know some of the women in our job field, they don't want to get married because they don't want to get, they don't want to, um, okay. get their pension um, taken away with this them. This happens all the time. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I don't want to sell my pension, so I'm about to stay single. Really? Yes. But, I, that, but that, you know, it comes to it that your upbringing again, you know, if you go, if you got a two parent household and your your, your 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 parents are not, oh, I can do it by myself. I'm independent. You won't have that kind of mindset. You really think it's the upbringing, bro? It's not. It's not all the time because I know people that got two parent households and they on this 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 society today. That's, That's not all of it. Well, it. It helps to have two parents. It helps. It helps compared to having just your mama and your mama bring you up and saying you better get you a man, get everything out of him. But. I can't just say it's just solely on your brain. It's most, not. most independent women tell you that. Oh, if, if she raising three or four young girls, first thing she's going to say, I did it by myself so you can do it by yourself. You can be independent too. Mm -hmm. So then what she's going to do is carry that same tradition into her future. Oh, yeah, I'm working. I'm independent. And next thing you know, you're 40 years old, and you just go from man to man, and you ain't accomplished nothing. Right. And then, like you said, when it comes, right, let's say this, and it comes to money, and the women is the breadwinner. So yeah. let's say an argument start, right? Bad arguments, Ooh. and an argument start. What's he gonna, gonna, gonna say? Oh, what's she gonna, gonna say, Tom? What's she gonna say? I don't know what she gonna say. I make more money than you. Well, I don't think she gonna say she make more money than you. That's <laughs> what you say, right? The first thing she gonna say. No, nah, in an argument, she gonna bring it up. You know, you, you gotta bring something to the table. Cause the first thing she gonna say is get out. Cause she paying all the bills. She gonna tell you to get out. No, no, she ain't even gotta be paying the bi all the bills. He could he could be paying all the bills, right? Yeah. She just make more. When they get into an argument, it's gonna get thrown in his face. Well, I don't know about yeah. all that. <laughs> yeah, they didn't do I don't know about all that. I mean, I mean, ten dollars. God forbid she make five more dollars than you. She's gonna throw it in your face. I make a thousand more than you. So what you she say? Gonna throw it in your I, face. And I don't need you. You know, when it's it comes to in your face. I don't need you because I just be take, take care of all this by myself. Yeah. When we're like that, it's, it's gonna get women. Get women know. Women know what to say to hurt you. They know what to say. Yes. You know. That, you know, that, that, you win too. Yeah. That's gonna crush a man's ego. They know yeah. what to do. They are gonna say the nastiest things, and that's one thing. Of course, you because know. that's how the world operate. Is you're somebody based on your financial status, which it shouldn't, course, be. It shouldn't be. So like what are you gonna? What do most people talk about? They got more money than you. That they got more money than you. That's that's what they're gonna use. I make more money than you. They gonna throw it in your face. Just like these rappers out here. Yeah. They they I got more money than you. They gonna throw it in your face. So that's gonna be bought up. Absolutely. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> we can't name this episode that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. <laughs> but yeah, like that that study that that says a lot, man, and that's why it's a lot more single women out here. That's why, like they said, these young people in college are like, nah, I ain't, I ain't going through that. And then I know people that got a divorce, right? Like working y'all feel. Mm-hmm. Got a divorce. They won't get married again because they don't want to lose their pension, like you said. They don't want to lose that money. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how it works. In fact, that pension be serious, bro. Yeah. So you I can't. Work Twenty years, and then you, you you know you be married to this guy for ten years or whatever, and things are rocky out there. Those ten years probably been rocky eight, nine years. You just stay with the person, try to you know work things out. Mm -hmm. Once that ten years come up, oh yeah, I want half of the pension. You gotta give me your pension. Who wants to go through that? That's you know, it. That's all it. your career. Just to give somebody your pension? Right. That's the name of the show. Half of your pension. <laughs> Half of your you know, pension. But, but I can't, you know, again, I can't just say, hey, they raised with two parents. She gonna know, you know, what to no, do. It's, it's based on the individual, you know what I'm saying? It does help. But that, that individual yeah. can leave that nest. They're not gonna do that, man. What, what? The, the parents, the, the, the parents gonna brainwash the daughter. You need to be just like me. 
Raise your kids independent. You don't need Tyrone. You don't need. Uh, you're saying that. You don't need Jason. Yeah. You're you saying who? Jason. You saying who not gonna do that? Are you following what I'm saying? I'm trying to follow because you're not making sense. You talking about Jason? What he, what he said in Tyrone. You don't need them. That's what I'm saying. Now she talking them. to two dudes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't need them. You can. I got a relative right now. Oh. That have kids and the, and the, and the, the, the mom tell the, the the daughter, oh you don't need him. You can do it by yourself. So when the kids upbringing just like that, the mentality is gonna be the same. Well, right. My mom raised me by myself. You know, I don't need no no dude. I can do this all by myself like my mama did. That's the mentality they gonna have. It's, it's, it's gonna be a, a dominant yeah, effect. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, if you're pregnant at 12 years old, most likely your daughter gonna get pregnant between 12 yeah. and 14 years old. And your the the grandma, the grandma's gonna be th- yeah. under 30. Yeah, it's gonna be the same thing. Y'all gonna be in the same club together. Exactly. Yeah, so I, like I always say, man, like if you have this kind of mentality and attitude, you, you you might get what your mama got. If your mama got a, a side dude or, or a boyfriend every three months, they're gonna be your cousin. That you, they, they, that's your uncle Ben coming over there. Yeah, we might you might get what your mama got. That's what I always say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know, yeah. yeah <laughs> women out here hurt when you know I, for women. I know I can't do play this. I know we talking about it. Uh-huh. But I can't say all women is like that. No, we're not saying that. We're not saying that. We're not saying that. Sensitive people listening. Please do not take it as ass. <laughs> we're saying all damn women are like that because y'all not. All women like it's Based some on women. this survey that was done. Yeah. It's a discussion, lady. Ma, calm down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> some women who actually, you know, don't care about that, who dudes who have a good, yeah. a basic job and they were trying to work it out with them, you know, but sometimes they end up getting hurt, you know, so. That's why they revert back to that. Because the women want. that don't care realize it's just more than just money. Yeah. And they realize, hey, yeah, I could do this by myself, but yeah. two is better than one. They also realize, hey, God put people in your life for a reason. Okay. And not only can I help him, but we can help each other. Yeah. Those are women. Yeah. Those are the exception to what we're talking about. So. Because it's, lo- it's lonely at the top. It is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's lonely at the top. It get, it get cold in that bed by yourself at nighttime. Yeah, dude, that money, that, that money ain't gonna cook your breakfast for you. He's not gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Foot roll, all that. It's only so so long you could double click your mouse. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Never real talk. <laughs> George Washington can't do it. So, yeah, man. Y'all had anything else y'all wanna get into, man? Before we get up out of here, man. I'm good, man. No. You've been good, man. <laughs> TJ? Uh, well, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I want to thank everybody who donated to Motivate for Christ for the Bahamas Relief. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these guys. Say, I can't get nothing out, man, I started to get serious. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look, I want to thank everybody who donated for Motivate for Christ. I'll put the, you'll see the picture on the screen. I'm going to post it. You'll see all the stuff that, uh, you know, the real cast, you know, tall. The shades, uh, you know, people who support the Motivate for Christ, they send stuff to the Bahamas and everything. So I want to thank y'all for uh, showing out and doing that. You know, I can't even say anything. Give me a little plug in. Man. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Like, you know, go ahead. It's on you, man. No, keep continuing. I'm done. That's the important thing, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I thank everybody who who gave. That was good. All right. Yeah, and again, people out there listening, um, you know, please donate for the Bahamas, man. It's, you know, that's a the people over there need a lot. They they they're struggling, and um, we're fortunate. Again, you gotta be fortunate that you know it didn't hit us, but it hit them. But you know, give what you can: water, tissue, soap, urine, mouthwash, whatever you can, man. Like if you could spend all day on Instagram, on Facebook, and all that stuff, you could get your research to find out where you could donate, what organizations you could donate to. I, I would just say be careful because there's a lot of scam artists out there. But your research. Do your research. Like I said, you do you research on where to get chicken sandwiches at and all that, or your corn balls. Donate, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, do good with your life for once. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, that's it, fellas. Yeah, yeah you're right. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> Again, man, you know, uh, everybody listening to YouTube, you know, leave your comments if you're new to this. Just hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button. Every video that is posted, you will get uh, an alarm, you know, that new video is there. Check us out on Spotify, man. Check us out on Google Podcasts, iTunes. Get on there and and leave a comment. 
you know, hit the like button and all that. And also on anchor.fm slash the railcast. Leave your voice message and hopefully it will be put on the next episode. This is the railcast and we are out. Thanks for watching.